welcome to a very special episode of The Dough Show. Today we're going to talk about the Anne's 2018 finale coming up at Evolution Wonder Lounge on May the 4th. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a great time. Uh, I'm Ferris Fair. And I'm Bambi Dextrous. And we have another really packed episode for you today, so let's get right into it. We have some interviews today with Davina Dyfor and Lilith Fair, previous winners of the Alberta's Next Drag Superstar. Exactly. Uh, yeah, Bambi sat down with Davina, and um, why don't we take a look at that right now? Hello and welcome to our interview. I'm here with Davina Dyfor, last year's winner of Alberta's Next Drag Superstar. Hi! Oh my god, thank you for the applause! <laughs> stop! Stop! Uh, you're too extra. <laughs> what did it mean to you to win the title of Alberta's Next Drag Superstar? Absolutely nothing. Uh, I'm <laughs> I, uh, I, um, I really enjoyed this year and it meant the world to me. Uh, well, it meant the drag world to me. Uh, when I first started um, out in Anne's, I was cut the first round and um, having that full year to develop as a performer and then being validated with the win really, really meant a lot to me. And it's pushed me into a place where I'm really confident with my drag and I can't thank Anne's enough. <laughs> uh, what do you feel your legacy was this year? And I don't want to hear about the pizza incident. <laughs> <laughs> my legacy is warning out others about anaphylaxis. It's a real problem. It's a batch. Um, <laughs> no, I think my legacy, um, what I really wanted to do, and I didn't get to do it enough, but I really wanted to travel kind of with the representation of Alberta drag, and I know when sometimes when you talk to people from other cities or from the U.S., they're like, there's drag there? What? Um, yeah. And especially in Edmonton, we have such a large and diverse drag scene that I really enjoyed going to like Vancouver and Regina, <laughs> and I really liked going to other places and being like, yeah, bitch, we got this drag. Um, so, yeah, I think that's kind of been my legacy. I still want to continue it, and I'm still going to continue it. Once I get rich, <laughs> I'm going to travel and say we're good <laughs> and eloquent. <laughs> <clears throat> now, serious question. Uh, this year we had a couple of wild cards from Edmonton that were voted mm -hmm. through. If you were in the room voting for a wild card, who would you pick? Um, this person that I would probably pick is, has really developed over this past year. Um, she didn't make it past the semifinals, but she was a wild card. Um, and her name is Rexy Resurrection. And I'm not saying it because I live with the bitch and she would kill me if I don't say it. <laughs> but um, I actually have seen um, her develop and she obviously won Queen of Hearts with Miss Bambi Dextrous. Yeah, she has improved this year. For sure, for sure. Like, uh, like tenfold. And I, I, she's devoted a little bit more time to drag um, from her busy schedule. Uh, and I really enjoyed seeing her perform and her getting to the semifinals. I mean, she really, really shone. I, I really enjoyed seeing her, so. Yeah. Yay. Um, so what trends have stood out to you this year, this and season, that you really enjoyed? Well, it is the year of the woman. Uh, so I've really enjoyed seeing um, women who do drag, whether it's being drag kings or being a drag queen. I've really enjoyed Kat. I've really enjoyed Moby and Duke Carson. Um, I really think... We've, had, we've been blessed in, in Alberta to have two years where there's been strong females who do drag in the top, in the finale. Um, actually, three because of Dixon. And uh, we also have Secretia from last year who really, really... She, she was a semi She was, yeah. Um, and then, as well as Kat and then Duke and Moby, I think it's really been... We've been blessed with the year of the woman, so... Yeah. Yeah. Um, on the flip side of that, is there anything you feel like has been missing this year that you'd like to see maybe show up on Friday? Well, I don't think it's been missing, but I really, really do want to see constant 
and consistent energy from the performers on Friday. I really want to see people um, be themselves, but bring it to the table and bring it with as much energy as they can. Really light up that room. Perfect. Um, so on Friday, let's suppose it comes down to Edmonton versus Calgary for that final lip sync for the win. Mm -hmm. um, who would you like to see representing Edmonton and, and who would you like to see representing Calgary? Um, I think I'm going to just go off based off of semifinal numbers. And I think from Edmonton, I would have to say Kat. Um, as I've said, I really think it would be monumental to have her in the top two again. Um, and she brought it for the semifinals, uh, and it was a moving political piece. Mm -hmm. I really enjoyed it. Uh, and then from Calgary, I think it's a toss-up between Moby Dick and Duke Carson. I think both of them have really defined what a drag king can be in Alberta, and they are full of energy. I'm so excited to see what they have to, uh, to bring on Friday. Um, and I think either one of them, and it would be yeah. so so monumental to have a female who just drank um, win. Yeah, so monumental and it would show where we are going as a province in our drag. Oh, exactly. Like, yeah, yeah like four years of cis males winning every year and now we're going to potentially have a female that does drag win. I'm sorry, did you just steal my gender? <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, so RuPaul's Drag Race All-Stars is a thing. Yeah. And if if Anne's ever did an all-star season, who would be in appearing in your dream vision of Anne's all-stars, you know, even from previous years? Um, I would probably say me. No. Uh, <laughs> excluding winners, I think, um, I think, I think they're all kind of second place um, losers uh, that I would choose. Um, first of all, Vanity Fair. I love her. She's my drag man, and she's she's so full of class and dignity. So opposite of me. Um, <laughs> I would love to see her um, compete again. I think she's a fabulous woman. Um, and then second, I would say probably Roselle Christina. Mm -hmm. I've been sort of missing her drag, and she's been here and there, but she hasn't been performing as much as she used to and I would love to see her I love when she crafts and I love when she brings to the stage just this phenomenal ethereal performance so I would really love to see her and if the bitch moved back from fucking BC already at Misty Meadows um, I saw her step up uh, in Vancouver uh, a couple weeks ago and she was just amazing uh, step up as Empress, sorry. She's the Empress 40-something. Um, and she <laughs> she is just so... She can pull off any look. She's oh, so yeah. classy. She's so polished. She's polished. I would love her to... I would love to see her again. Oh, my God. Yeah. Ah. Yes. And so Friday is our finale. Um, do you have any advice for the contestants on Friday? Um, well, at this moment, you probably can't change anything about your performance. Um, but... I would probably say just just be yourself, bring that energy and have fun. I mean, it's really hard to have fun when there's so much like pressure on you. But I mean, last year I really I really pushed that on myself. I was like, I need to have fun at the finale because no matter what happens, I don't want to be totally heartbroken if I don't win and I I'm competing against all these beautiful talented people. I'm really not going to be upset if I don't win. Um, I really want it, but at the end of the day, it has to be fun for me. It's drag. Drag's supposed to be fun. So, yeah, have fun. <laughs> have fun, kids! Good <laughs> luck! And do you have any advice for anyone who takes home the title on Friday? Um, one, don't overbook yourself, because I sure did. Uh, <laughs> and two, uh, know your worth. Uh, winning this title really means that you are at the top of Alberta drag. Um, so, uh, there's been times this year where I have, like, people have asked me, Oh, what should I pay you for the show? And I'm like, A drink? <laughs> Two dollars? I don't know. Um, but yeah, you can ask for a bit more. Well, you can ask for a bit more, right? You can value your, your time more. And, um, I think that's a really important lesson. You can be a sort of a diva. Uh, and 
you're totally in the right to be a diva. So please do. <laughs> Says Davina the diva. Uh. <laughs> well, there's our interview and uh, thumbs up and good luck to the contestants on Friday. Yep, yep, yep. Pew, pew, pew. <laughs> <laughs> Davina was so much fun to interview. Oh my gosh. Uh, yeah. Um, and then you sat down with Lilith. Fire. I sat down with Mama and we uh, also chatted about her year and uh, uh, what's happened since then and Anne's this year. So let's go to that clip right now. Welcome to Lilith Fair, uh, Anne's winner 2016. Um, what I wanted to say first. Thank you so much for having me. Yay! It really means a lot. I know that your schedule is super full. So super full. Thank you for squeezing me in. <laughs> uh, Lilith drove back from Vancouver yesterday. She's uh, our traveling busy queen. Uh, you had a great time there? I did. Days? I mean, drive is one way to say I took a plane. I oh, guess. did you? Yeah. Oh, I didn't realize that. Sorry. No, I would never. I, oof, that drive is very long. Treacherous. Treacherous. Mountainous. Mountainous. No, I, I, I flew and I had a wonderful time. Okay. Yeah, I, I got to work with lots of incredible Van Vancouver entertainers, Misty Meadows, uh, Dust, Alma Bitches, Erica Clash from Dragula. Oh um, yeah, right yeah, on. Right on. Um, Empress Misty Meadows. Empress Misty Meadows of the Mother Court of Canada. Yeah, isn't that cool? Yeah. yeah. I, uh, sad we didn't get the videos. I'm gonna leave it at that. We are, there will be some though. Oh good. On a, on a different channel. Uh, good. Tara Stang. Uh, we'll, we'll totally link to them when we, when we get them, because we love Misty. Um, the rest of the court. <laughs> um, what I first wanted to start with, <laughs> Anne's, was uh, what did it mean to you to win the title of Alberta's Next Drag Superstar? Um, it was incredibly validating to win Anne's. Um, I, I hadn't really seen the camp drag that I was doing um, in Edmonton before, and um, it, there was, I don't want to say resistance, because I was welcomed pretty, pretty much with open arms, but there was some hesitation from some people uh, at first until I think they got to know me better, so to be able to bring my theatricality and my camp aesthetics to the end stage in 2016 mm -hmm. after two years of just not being able to do it because mm -hmm. I was out of the city and to um, to win was incredibly validating um, it really meant a lot as somebody that um, really respects the art form of drag and the art form of comedy drag and um, yeah it was, it was um, I think it really did it really did help show a lot of people um, your versatility, uh, your diversity, um, and I don't think anybody discounts your drag. Um, I think the well, reputation discount. But... <laughs> uh, I think uh, I think the reputation of Lil Affair, mm. whatever that is, yeah. can be polarizing. Yeah. But as you say, once they actually get to know. Yeah. The man behind the makeup, yeah. not to gender you. But yeah, the, <laughs> um, it is. It the is person different. Person behind all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wet and wild. Uh, there's a character, and then there's a person. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway, enough about that. Cool. Cool. <laughs> I do love a good discounted outfit. Though. Yes. This was on sale because someone was murdered in it. <laughs> it's haunted. It's haunted. Well, not more haunted things. <laughs> it's a haunted bell. Um, what did you feel your legacy was as Albert's Next Drag Superstar? Um, I think my legacy has been one of unwavering ambition. Uh, sometimes um, confidence where there was nothing to be confident in. Mm -hmm. uh, I, yeah. I think you're somewhat a believer in the putting the thought forward and achieving it. Though, yeah, too. I know what I mean. So I, mean, I believe in the secret. Yeah. Yeah, I have a vision board. Right. <laughs> uh, no, I so I mean that's partly the confidence though too. Like you, you put the confidence in, and then you're going to get there. I think if I've left any sort of legacy, hopefully it's young queens. What? What? Yeah. What? What I hope young 
entertainers take away from what I've done or what I did in my year as drag superstar, it's that if you want to accomplish something, you need to work for it. You need to actually go out into the world and do the work, put in the time, um, make the contacts, um, nurture those contacts, mm -hmm. uh, and stay true to what it is that you do. Mm -hmm. Because if you develop a truly unique approach to drag and work really hard at fostering that, other venues will need to take notice of you because nobody else does what you do. Yeah. And then if you display a really excellent work ethic, they'll want to keep working with you. Mm -hmm. For sure. Um, well, and again, like I've done shows with you and stuff too, and again, like, you know, the, uh, the idea of Lilith as the party girl and having a fun mm -hmm. time and everything, right? Like that's, that's the image. Whereas I've never seen you take a drink before you go on stage, or you know what I mean? Like that's just it's it's the professional side. It's yeah. a it's a job to you. It's a absolutely. Unless I'm Diane, because I'm also a method actor, <laughs> and Diane's an alcoholic, yeah. and then I'll get on stage quite drunk. Okay. Yeah, but that's not Lilith. No, it's not. <laughs> that's someone else. I've never even met her. I know. I, I would like to. All right. Enough about you. I'm sorry. Well, but we'll see. we're talking. <laughs> We are talking about Anne's 2018. Round um, five. Round five. Season and five. Still alive. Season, yes. Series five. We'll be British. Um, this year, what they had done for the wild card spot, uh, what they did is they put all the queens that had been in the uh, Superstar series this year in a room, and everybody got a vote as to who they wanted to put through for a wild card spot. Mm. Going into the semifinals. Going into the yeah. semifinals. What ended up happening was. Uh, Due to some ties, was uh, Rexy Resurrection and um, Sapphire went through. Um, if you had been in that room, based on the preliminary performances, who would you have thrown a wild card vote to? Oh, based on the preliminary performances. Um, I mean, you were out of town, so you had to watch them on Dragging Your Heels. I did have to watch them. <laughs> um, I guess I would have to say I would. Give it to Lady Tenderflake mm -hmm. based on the preliminary performances. Yep. Um, what I like about their approach to drag is that it is unconventional. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think it's unfair to say that it still la it lacks polish. Yep. Makes sense. She's so, the first to admit. But, she... so, but so do I. So yep. like, what the fuck am I saying that for? But um, I, I like that it is more than just. Here I am, a glamorous woman. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, um, I don't know. I, I also like a queen that brings references to drag. And I liked that they were ambitious enough to be like, I'm going to be the alien queen. Right. I'm going to do a weird song and be the alien queen and, um, and build their own alien queen look. Based on semifinals, somebody that I would have given a wild card to going into the finale is Lord is the Merry Virgin. Because mm -hmm. um, I thought that X-Files routine was fucking cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, in my placings, before they were announced, in my placings, I had Lord of the Merry Virgin. It's awesome. Check out the video. Yeah, I think it's yeah. fucking cool. It's, it's a fantastic number. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, we love Lordy. And what she brings on love. those... <laughs> uh, what she brings on those nights when she really fully realizes her concept, it's absolutely amazing. And, and, yeah. and uh, yeah, there's there's really nobody out there that can do what she does. Like it's anyway, yeah. as you say, finding your niche. As you were talking about Lilith and everything mm -hmm. else, like the same thing. Absolutely. with Her Lordis has found Very what she strongly. does. Yeah, we're Virgo sisters. So. <laughs> um, next in the prelims and semifinals, um, has there been any trends or uh, themes or anything that you've kind of noticed popping up? Um, Backup dancers and hip hop music. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I, I, yeah. I agree. I, backup dancers has definitely become something. I think it's become an expectation. Yep. And I'm not sure that's really for the best. Yeah. I think there is sort of an opinion. And I mean, and I, I used two backup dancers that were dressed very similarly uh, through every round yep. of Drake Superstar. Um, but I think I, that I think also I, taught people that might be what you could do to win. Yeah, but I also think that. I used my 
back at people in a slightly different way. I use them sort of in a theater ensemble yep. role, whereas I feel like now it's sort of one person, and this is not, if this is what you want to do, this is great. Mm -hmm. I'm speaking completely personally in terms of aesthetics that I like. Um, I, and I think that's great. I think if you are a dancer and you can hit those dance mm -hmm. moves and your backup dancers mm -hmm. are actually dancers, then it looks great. Yeah. Um, uh, but I think it's become sort of the this is what you need to do yeah. for ands and uh, it's like, like it's like I'm a quick sure. quick way to make it ands worthy. It, it makes it to make it to make it fierce. Yeah. Whatever that yeah. means. Um, and I'm not sure that's like if uh, you know, I think it's exciting when it's really really great. But yeah. I'm not sure if it'll remain exciting in year yeah. six, year seven. Year, yeah. You know what I mean? Um, well, this is. You had backup dancers in your number, yeah. but they weren't really dancers. Like they were there. For they were there to hold my props. It's basically <laughs> the truth, though. They were there to yeah. add to the number. It yeah. was your number that they added to. It didn't all of a sudden feel like an ensemble piece to me. Right. You know what I mean? Like they were the supporting part of it. When they were there fierce, to help you out. When it's fierce, though, it's fierce. Oh yeah. And there have been some exceptional uses of backup dancers. There have. Cat Marlowe's yes. backup dancers. Uh, both when it was Krisha and Goblin, yeah. and then when it was her yeah. friends from the dance world, yeah. uh, were incredibly fierce. Yeah, um, I agree. The uh, the um, more jokey trend that I'd like to throw in is backup dancers lip syncing. Yeah, <laughs> don't let your backup dancers lip sync. It's no. not their it's not their turn. No. Um, yeah, especially only part of it, and, yeah, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's probably their nerves. Yeah, like, yeah. They're like, oh, dun, 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 dun. I better move my mouth. Yeah. Anyway, but no, I, I totally mm -hmm. agree. That's all legit. Uh, the flip side of that, um, do you feel like there's anything that's been lacking or missing so far in the competition, or something that you want to just see more of from the performers on Friday? Um, I mean, I'm always, in, I mean, I'm always in the mood for more comedy. I feel like um, there has been, there have been definitely comedic elements. Uh, Pheromones, Chola number, mm -hmm. uh, Ivy has brought comedy in mm -hmm. both routines. Mm -hmm. uh, um, Kat's first number was quite, I mean, it wasn't funny, but it was definitely like charming. In yeah, yeah. That sort of, um, yeah. in that way. Um, no, read. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, but I mean, I'm always in the mood to, to, to laugh. Yeah, and I think I think you can strike a balance between being very very funny and being very very fierce at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I guess the gripe that I was having was that there was maybe um, a lack of being true to your established mm -hmm. drag persona, but I feel like that's not true for the finalists. Yeah, that's valid. Yeah, I think the people that have made it to the finale have really showcased who it is that they are as drag entertainers. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, that hasn't 100% worked for everyone. I mean, Lady T was very true to her aesthetic yeah. and didn't make it. Lourdes was very true to her aesthetic yeah. and didn't make it. But um, I think, but <laughs> she was dressed like a deer. No, she <laughs> definitely had antlers on. Uh, <laughs> um, but I, I, I think that you are more likely to succeed in it mm -hmm. if you are true to who it is that you have presented to the community mm -hmm. for the rest of the year when it's not Anne's time. Yeah. yeah. Uh, take you and turn it the hell up. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, do what it is that people like about you yeah. and expand upon that. Mm -hmm. Don't think, oh, think, okay, I am a, I am a comedy queen, so I better so I better get out there and dance the house down boots, yes yeah. god, mama, death drop. Like, because that's not what people know you yeah. for. So if people come to see you and be impressed by you, they might be impressed by that, but they'll probably say, but that wasn't, that wasn't Lilith. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, yeah. You know. um, I, and again, like, to go back, like, you showed like a lot of your diversity. I mean, you took, you showed that you aren't pigeonholed either. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You were able to show different uh, styles and things that you're able to do without just always going for the campy. Little yeah. too, you know what I mean? Absolutely. But even that, like, even when you were sh like singing Phantom of the Opera, there was still a fucking vagina coming out. You know what I mean? So there was still camp attitude, even when you were doing the. Mm -hmm. So anyway, thank you. So it was all still up. I take that.
Well, I, uh, well, thank you for complimenting me specifically, but I do think that all of the winners have showcased mm -hmm. that versatility. Mm -hmm. That's true. Um, where, like, Tiramisu came out and did something that was, like, very um, cultural. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I believe that was for the finale, Euphoria? Yeah, the, the, yeah, yeah. yeah. Falling the rose petals? The, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, butterflies. and then also, oh cool, <laughs> but, then also, but then also did the number that was a little, I mean it wasn't like comedy because that's not what Tiaramisu's aesthetic is, but it was campier in the, in the idea that like, oh I have killed my mm -hmm. other competitors and yeah. they had their heads. So like, I think all of the, um, all of the winners, Davina, yeah. uh, who was like, here's my, here's my fierce dance number. Here's my sort of kookier, Bride of Frankenstein kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Like, everybody that has succeeded has shown immense versatility. And, I mean, a lot of the people that haven't ultimately won have also shown that yep. incredible versatility. But I think that that is the secret. Yeah, that's true. Exploring every aspect of what it is that you are. It's true. Um, all right. I have... A question. Oh, suppose in an interview. What weirdy? Eh? Yeah, um, suppose on Friday we have a final two with one performer each from Calgary and Edmonton, based on their semi-final performances only. Okay. Who's in the lip sync? Uh. I'm going to select, and this is no shade to anyone else because nope. everyone has done an incredible job, an incredible job. Um, Kat Marlowe Menorah. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tie them because I can't choose mm -hmm. both of the kings from Calgary, mm -hmm. Duke Carson and Moby Dick. Mm -hmm. um, in addition to being exceptionally fierce entertainers, mm -hmm. they also excite me the most from my social justice warrior perspective, <laughs> mm -hmm. where I think those three entertainers specifically, with a win, and again, no shade to any of the other competitors, nope. you would all do incredible jobs with your reign, but they to me would be the most exciting as winners because they could bring an entirely, an entirely new perspective yeah. to the winner yep. that we have not had before as female bodied entertainers. Exactly. Uh, in either being a king or being a hyper queen. Mm -hmm. um, to have that perspective in drag, we haven't had it before. No. Nope. We've had four cisgendered um, male winners yep. who do queen. Yep. Um, so that to me would be the most exciting addition to the winner's circle. For sure, for sure. Um, and to me, the best part of that is that I agree with your picks mm -hmm. just from a purely performance based yeah. stuff. It's not and just, I, it's and not, that, yeah. the, that's all just the bonus, it's right? It's not, you just, know what I mean? It's like not, that's, just, it, yeah, it's not that's, just equality, exactly. like equal higher. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's also they're immensely fierce. Yeah, like yeah. they they deserve it, and it's that's yeah. the bonus that we get to tick that box. Like it's about fucking time box kind of yeah. thing. <laughs> and I, like that doesn't have to be what their reign is no. about at all. No, but in a certain way, it would be about that. It, it, without them yeah. needing to pursue yeah. that narrative. In the same way that Kenya is the is the first. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Like she broke that barrier down. Mm -hmm. It is a part of her legacy. It's a part of who she is and what she's done as Empress this year. Absolutely. So yeah, totally legit. Um, all right. This one is back a little bit more personal to you. Ooh. Finally. Virgo. <laughs> 7.5. Um, if we were ever to be able to have an all-star season yeah. of Alberta's Next Drag Superstar, um, besides the previous winners, because mm -hmm. as Bibi Sahara Cameroon has proved, um, winners can be included. Well, I also... If we were going to do an all-star season of Anne's, I feel like the only way to make it feel like an all-star season of Anne's would be to include the winners, yep. because otherwise, like, because the same thing, like, if you don't win, you're allowed to apply. It's true, it's true. So how would it feel different, you know yeah. what I mean? It's true. Like, 
That, it's would, true. that would have to it be. It would just be an extra round. Yeah. yeah, that would have to be an extra round. So, besides the previous winners who should be included, thank you. Um, I would love to. Um, name three competitors that you'd like to see in it with you. Mm. Um, Misty Meadows. Mm -hmm. Chelsea Horrendous. Mm -hmm. um, Vanity Fair. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, great choices. Um, yeah, no, uh, each one of those has definitely shown. And, and again, Vanity hasn't done it since that second year and like that. Uh, and alternative winner of Calgary's Next Drake Superstar mm. 2013, if they do it, Diva Dave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, totally. And maybe that should be... Just... As people always leave Diva Dave out of the winner's circle, Diva Dave is in the winner's circle. It was called Calgary's Next Drake Superstar. It was owned by different people. But yeah. that's, that's the legacy of the competition. Yeah. That was the season one RuPaul's Drag Race season of this competition, which we are allowed to enjoy every year. Yeah. And Diva Dave deserves all the same props that the rest of us do. Well, there you go. Yeah. There you go. Um, yeah, again, like, <laughs> I, because we started dragging our heels at the end of 2014, like, mm -hmm. there's just, there's, there is no, Lost content. There is no history. Yeah. Anyway. I was there, though, and it was fierce. Right on. Yeah. Yeah. No, we came to it late. Mm. It's Lourdes' fault. She didn't... Drag started in 2013. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Twigs are a liar. Sorry, Twigs. <laughs> She's a fucking liar. <laughs> Um, finally, uh, we have advice questions. Um, I know. Uh, do you have any advice for the finalists for their performances on Friday? I mean, obviously it's probably too late for them to yeah. I mean, change what um, You're gonna feel nervous, for sure. You're gonna feel nervous if this means a lot to you, and I assume that it means a lot to all of you. But understand when you get there that 100% of the people in the room want to see you succeed. Nobody wants, I mean, as much fun as it is later for us to all hee hee about a big fucking failure, nobody wants to no. go to a competition and for five minutes watch somebody shit the bed. Yeah. Nobody wants that. They want to see you live in your best moment. So take your nerves, turn them into excitement, and deliver your best product because everyone there, judges included, want to see you succeed. 100%. That's fabulous. That's fabulous. Um, any final advice for the eventual winner? Um, there's this weird rule that if you win, you have to take me out to brunch. <laughs> And pay. I know that Rob hasn't told you about this yet, but it is the twist that comes with winning. <laughs> you have to take part of that thousand mm dollars -hmm. and take me out for food. Mm -hmm. Because I'm what? Hungry. Take <laughs> Tavina too. I don't know. No cheese. No dairy. Yeah. Mm. Unless. Unless! <laughs> Unless you're running for all stars. <laughs> Uh, thank you so much, Lola, for joining us. You are so welcome. What a pleasure to finally meet. <laughs> Bye. Bye. You know, my mother always has a lot to say, and I promise it was edited for time and not for content. <laughs> um, now that we've heard uh, some previous winners, um, opinions on, on this year and, and how Friday's going to go, I thought you and I could discuss us as well. Um, same questions that we asked them. Okay. Um, I will start with you. If you were one of the judges and on Friday and uh, the semifinals were the finale performances, mm -hmm. um, if it was an Edmonton Calgary finale, um, uh, final lip sync, who would be your pick from Edmonton and who would be your pick from Calgary? Again, this is just going based off of what I saw for the semifinals. Uh, I'd have to pick from Edmonton, Cat Marlowe Menora, and from Calgary, I'd have to go with Duke Carson. Yeah. Um, not to be a totally repetitive bitch, but yeah, I completely and utterly agree. Yeah, um, I was just about what to I, ask 
You are the same. What I have seen from Kat so far this competition, I definitely think she deserves to be there. Uh, if she brings that same kind of energy and... and, and yeah, like uh, Kat is bringing the comedy and the political side of things as yeah. well, and she is powerful, and we know we can expect a lot of great things from Kat. Yeah. So yeah, I would definitely put Kat there. And then for, for Edmonton, I completely agree. Duke, Duke Carson is my one to beat, and I've said that to anyone who will listen. So, uh, <laughs> Duke Carson, Trust. yeah, we Duke know. Carson is incredible. Um, I've been hyping him for over a year, and I am just ecstatic that he has been Hashtag in the family. Justice for Duke. Justice for Duke. <laughs> and yeah, and Moby, Moby Dick too. Like it's just, it's. I cannot wait for the for the finale on Friday, and I really hope that everyone brings the same energy or more than they brought to their semis because it's going to make for a fantastic show. Yes. Um, other question I wanted to ask. If they were ever to do an all-star season of Anne's, um, excluding previous winners, who I hope would still be able to be included too, mm -hmm. because as I said, if Bibi Sahara Bonet or whatever the hell her name is can, can come back, I mean, so can Lilith. Um, yeah. So, excluding, so, excluding previous winners, because I think they should have a right to compete if they want to, yeah. um, who would you pick for some of your people that you would like to see in, in an all-star season of Ah, well, the bitch has to move back into the city, but I really want Mel Trix mm -hmm. to come back for an All-Stars. I really would like to see Bianca Lovegood again. Mm -hmm. Do you remember her Hello from, Hello the, from the Other Side? <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember that? So, the Bianca Lovegood is my second pick. I love her. And my third pick, Felicia Bonet from mm -hmm. Calgary. Ah, uh, so funny, and again, brings the polish and brings her expert level of um, showmanship. Yeah, you know, uh, bitch stage. turns out a performance, for sure. Yes. <laughs> um, she, is, she is mesmerizing when she's on stage. I'm going to flip the question back on to you, Ferris. Okay. And uh, which three would you pick from a previous season to appear in All-Stars? Um, <laughs> I'd be remiss if I didn't say Roselle Christina. Um, She's she's one of my favorites of all time. I just think she's absolutely stunning, and I think her performances are fantastic. And the level that she brought at Anne's the year that mm -hmm. she did it was was unbelievable. And and honestly, the competition at the end between her and Tierra and everything like uh, it's what helped us fall in love with the drag scene of Edmonton. So um, I would love to see Roselle back. Um, mm -hmm. Also, from that first season that we were there, um, I was screaming. I had never really been to a drag show before, and I was screaming at the fact that Chanel to Sinead didn't make it into the final. I, yeah. I, I thought she was absolutely fantastic, and so I also, from that first season, would pick Chanel to. I would love yes, to see her. For Chanel to. Yes, I would love to see her come back um, and, and uh, perform again. And then... A perennial favorite of mine in the Anne's competition, who um, I think has made it to the finale at least once. Um, but uh, I would love to see Lourdes again. Um, Lourdes deserves to be in it every year, as far as I'm concerned. And I think if there was an all-star version from what she has shown uh, throughout the years, I definitely think that, that uh, she deserves to be there, too. Yeah. Um, that is all we have. Um, I hope you enjoyed. Um, I hope we will all see you out on Friday, May the 4th, be with the winner. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll see you Friday at Anne's finale with Derek Berry, Nebraska Thunderbuck. Thunderbuck. I keep saying Thunderbuck. <laughs> you got Nebraska Thunderbuck. And, uh, and Nick San Pedro. <laughs> Score. Score. Anyway, right. thanks see for watching. Time. Bye. Bye.